Um, we continue with the food pantry on the last Sunday. That would be next Sunday, July 25th. And we thank you for all your support and all the pounds of food that we have been able to deliver to people so much in need. Um, trustees meeting on the uh, Thursday, July 27th at 7 p.m. and we're going to meet at Memorial Hall in person. New CDC guidelines for singing on church. We will just appreciate that we continue singing with our masks on. Um, for now, we will continue doing that to sing, just to sing. There's All more. Right. Any other announcement? Uh, youth. All right. Yes, we have a lot of things going with the youth. Um, Pastor Jeanette, you want to? This week, we have two things coming up. If you'll see in your bulletins, we have a, a pink flyer. And this week we have the escape room coming up on Wednesday. And that's at 6 o'clock. We would like you to meet us at the escape room. It's in Fairfield, Fairfield New Jersey at 550. But it would be great if you can RSVP um, to the office before, before that on Monday. So it's not just me and Megan at the escape room. Um, and then Friday this week we're going to have a movie on the lawn. And that's at 830. And we will surprise you with what the movie is because we cannot uh, advertise the movie ahead of time. And then the rest of the summer, also, if you can RSVP to all of these activities, that would be great, so we know in advance. And we're still waiting for the insurance company to improve, approve of our uh, rafting trip, and as soon as we do that, I will get a bus, and then um, the price for that will depend on what the bus costs. But right now, uh, the average price for the whitewater trip would be about $54 per person just for the trip. And that would be to Jim Thorpe in Pennsylvania. And then we'll get a bus after that. And if we could fill a bus, it's not gonna be, I mean, we're looking between $75 to $100, depending on if we could fill a bus. And that's it. Is there any questions on that? Okay. All right, thank you so much. And uh, so some of our activities are coming up, and that is very good. Any other announcements for today? All right. Come see Matilda tonight. Come see Matilda it's tonight. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Yes, we were yesterday there. And, and let me tell you, I don't know how these kids do it. They just met for two weeks, and they are pro. It's like going to a Broadway show. I was very surprised. And we, we see our kids there, you know, that's the best thing. We saw uh, so, many, so many of our uh, kids from, from, from our community. That is, is, is very awesome, very awesome. All right. So let us, you may stand for the call to worship. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Members of God's family brothers and sisters to one another. There are no outsider among us. No, no one has any special standing or bragging rights. For we have been brought together by the redeeming love of Jesus. Let's, Let's all join, join together, together in, worship. in worship. Amen. Please join me, join us for He is Exalted.
join in the opening prayer. Lord, we gather here this morning with lives that are filled with activity and movement. We rush from one thing to another as though we are going to run out of time to accomplish everything. Help us to let go of the hectic times and the stresses and find our rest in you. Relax our spirits and refresh our souls. Remind us that there will always be things to do and places to go, but that we need the rest of the spirit that you provide. Amen. Let's take a moment for a silent confession. As reconciled people, we may pass the peace of Christ among, among us and among each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The peace of Christ. Those who are in Facebook, may the peace of Christ be with you too, wherever you are. And keep passing the peace of Christ. We have our children's message. <laughs> you don't really have to come up. <laughs> I love you. Oh, who here? I don't want Ned to be angry, but I do use my mic. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you're going to be my children this morning. Has anyone ever had a really, really good dream? It feels good, right, when you wake up and you've had a really terrific dream? This morning I'm going to read a book called God's Dream, and it was, Richard, it was written by the Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa, who's a Nobel Peace Prize winner for all his work to bring peace and equality to South Africa. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows or reaching across the sky? I hope you can see it somewhere. Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or about being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad. And so very long. Sometimes, sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too.
Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole again. God dreams that every I'm going to have strength. <laughs> God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me. Even if we have different mommies and daddies or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller. Even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring, as easy as holding, playing, laughing, as easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. And now will you pray with me? Dear God, Dear God help me to remember your dream. Help me to remember your dream. Each time I smile, each time I smile, say a kind word, say a kind word, or do a kind deed. Or do a kind deed. Amen. Amen. Hilary, thank you so much. It is amazing how the Spirit of God binds us together and brings together things. And God knows. Thank you so much for that. God's dream. It's a moment to share our joys and concerns. We will start with our joys. Any joy today that you want to share? I have a joy. Uh -huh. I probably got that flat on the, on the church property done. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Another joy. I saw a hand here. Did you learn? I was going to say, uh, just seeing live music and performance last night and the kids hugging each other and singing and dancing. It was so much fun. It was. It was a big joy for me to go there, so I, I thank Jeanette for... Um, she was going to pick me up, but she didn't pick me up. She ended up not picking me up. <laughs> I was going to say thank you, but no, you didn't pick me oh, up. Oh, okay, so it's a concern. <laughs> I'm out. All right, we, we went together. That's a good thing. We went together and we had a lot of fun and we uh, saw our kids. And, and yes, that was awesome. Um, did I see a hand here? Janet, no? Oh. Oh. I had two wonderful weekends uh, celebrating my 80th birthday. Awesome. Birthdays are good. Happy birthday. And I'm glad that you had good weekends. And I'm happy to see you again among us. It's, it's very good to, to see you here with us. Any other joys? Uh, Gio? Uh, Wilbur's getting better today. Praise God. Next Sunday, I get to go to a wedding shower for two girls. <laughs> and I get to meet the in-laws. Concerned there, so. <laughs> <laughs> and my last joy is my roof didn't leak last night. All right. Very good. That's a that's a that's a big joy when we have stormy weather. <laughs> I saw a hand around here. Another hand. Um, concerns. Any concerns to share? Prayer request. Jill.
Okay, we keep Jeff in our prayers and may God, our healer, our peace, our hope, be with him and, and comfort him and heal him. Amen. God. My son is in a triathlon this morning, so for his safety. Also, my friend Danielle is having problems with her heart rhythm, and she could use our prayers as well. Danielle. Danielle. All right. So prayers for Carlin, son, and um, may he be safe and have a good um, time as, as he do his exercises and, 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 and goes along with his journey. And also prayers for Danielle um, healing. Mary? Um, Mary Jones is still uh, having trouble. He's got some internal bleeding. And we just pray for him. He's a, a resident of Mount Tabor. OK, God, here are prayers for Mary Jones. Be his healer and comforter. You would like to say something else? No? Someone else? All right. Let us pray. Precious Lord, you've heard our joys and you've heard our concerns. As we come together as a community of faith, we come knowing that you are our healer, that you are our comforter, and that you are who gives us joy and peace. And we pray that prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass, and give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in the preparation hymn. Remember, 
that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were, at that time, without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the, with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The Lord of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God, for your word. May it become lamp to our feet as we walk through this earth. May the meditation of our minds and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Redeemer, our Rock. Amen. Well, today's meditation is about God's dream, in fact. And um, Hillary, certainly um, the Spirit uh, is uniting us in that. And, and it's because the book of the Ephesians, the letter of the Ephesians in chapter 2, that verses 11 to 22 that Janet just read, it's about that. It's about coming together. It's about coming together as one people, as new people in Christ. Last Sunday, we started talking about the letter to the Ephesians. This letter that was written by Apostle Paul or by one of his disciples, offers a powerful message of what it means to be a Christian and how our actions define who we are as Christians. Although this letter was written almost 2,000 years ago and to a particular audience, audience, followers of Jesus in Asia Minor, it is very relevant to these days and in fact to all humanity of all times. Last week, the challenge question was, where is our hope? The scriptures we read insist that our hope ought to be in Jesus Christ, in whom all things are brought together. The challenge for today is to think and ponder, where is our peace? We often think of peace as still water, or as a soft wind that help us relax, or a soft music that we put just to try to relax and get out of the um, hairiness of the world. But the peace that Paul is talking in his letter is the peace that comes from being the body of Christ in the world, doing what is good, breaking down the barriers and walls that divides us, and live reconciled among each other. That is the dream of God that Hillary just read to us. And that is unlike the Pax Romana or Roman peace of the first century that depended solely on military forces wiping out those who opposed them and raising taxes to uphold that militia. Or a peace founded in us and them, redlining despising and even hating others who are not like us. 
That is not the peace that Jesus offers. That is not the peace that we are to offer as Christians to the world. For the next five weeks, we will continue talking about more challenges that the letter of uh, Ephesians offered to the followers of Jesus in first century Asia Minor and to us today, wherever we are. Today's scripture talks about the reality of divisions and racism in first century among the followers of Jesus. You see, there were followers of Jesus that were Gentile. There were followers of Jesus that were Jews. Then there were followers of Jesus that were Gentile Judaizers, meaning that were Gentiles but wanted to follow the Jewish law or they were told they had to follow the Jewish law, and that is what they were doing. And there were divisions among all of them. There were divisions among all of them because there were differences. There were racial differences, there were theological differences, there were cultural differences, there were language differences, and they did not even share the same reality amongst them. There were those in Jerusalem who were more poor, and there were those in other places who were better in, where they had other better economic and financial situation. But there were others who had who were slaves, and there were men, and there were women, and there were differences in many, many ways. And those differences were separating them. Those differences were were they, they were having they were quarreling among them on how the things should be done, how we were to follow Jesus, what we needed to do or don't do, what was the right thing. And thanks God, they didn't have social media at that time. Because I can't imagine, I can't imagine with social media having all those differences when yet, I mean, Jesus had barely gone. This was first century. This was... I mean, there were no books, there were nothing. It was just people telling their experiences with Jesus and teaching what they heard with, about Jesus and what they heard say Jesus said. So can you imagine all the differences and all the uh, 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 different uh, ways of looking and saying things at that moment? As I read the scriptures today, I thought of today's reality in our country and in the world. A country that embraced Christianity since its foundation, and yet it seems we are not living to the standards of that. It seems that we have not read enough the letter to the Ephesians, or perhaps we have not reflected enough on it. We are told by this letter that Jesus is our peace. And I am sure that many of us have heard this over and over. Jesus, yes, is our peace. So much that it is a practice of Christian liturgy and almost anywhere to greet each other at church with the peace of Christ. One thing that the pandemic has brought us in Sunday services is the hug or the touching or the shaking hands to pass the peace of Christ. I hope that that comes back. I'm a hugger, so, and, and, and I like to, to embrace people. So I hope that the day will come where we can go back to that. I know that in turbulent moments, we pray to God for Christ's peace. Who does not? I always do. It was Jesus' peace what calmed the turbulent waters in the Sea of Galilee that stormy night when the disciples thought they would drown. It is Jesus' peace that we invo invoke to calm our turbulent waters when we face them. It is undeniable that Jesus comes to our encounter to give us peace when we face troubled waters. But this is not the kind of peace that the letter of the Ephesians is talking about. That is not what Paul is talking about. The, nas the nascent, 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 the nascent Christian church 
in Asia Minor was facing conflicts among believers. What was true, what was not true, what was essential, what was not essential to follow Jesus. What to believe, what not to believe. Who was an insider and who was an outsider. And us versus them attitude. And those differences were not only among Jews, followers of Christ, and Gentile followers of Christ, but also even among the Gentiles, followers of Christ, that had both the idea that they needed to follow the Jewish law, to be a follower of Jesus. There was so much confusion. For they came to be the champion of Christianity for Gentiles. And this certainly extends for us today. He had a clearly understood what was essential and what was not. He was clear that the God of creation is the God of all time for all peoples, that we are all children of God, and that salvation is for all humanity, and for all that is, even nature, that is suffering the consequences of our sin. The concreteness in Paul's time when he wrote the letter was the racial hostilities among Christianized Jews and Gentiles. Those of the circumcision preferring to Christianize Jews who demanded and said that you had to be circumcised in order to follow Jesus, and those who were not circumcised referred to as the uncircumcised, referring to the Gentiles. And Paul Paul reminds them of the racial hostilities among them and tells them that all believers, Jewish and non-Jewish, are made into a new people in Christ. God united them in the common bond of their faith in Christ, regardless of their ethnic identities, regardless of wherever they were, regardless even of their theological differences. Paul reminds the Ephesians that when Jesus came to this earth, he announced the good news of peace, meaning that Jesus brought all together. In Jesus, we all come together as one. In Jesus, we are to be reconciled people because we are our fellow citizens of God's household. And there's no stranger or alien in God's household. We become one, even in our, with our differences and in our diversity. But Paul goes even further. He says that God does not reside in a building of stone, as it has been previously believed. And as some people still believe today, God's dwelling place is not in stone and mortar temples. See, God's people don't gather at the temple to worship God. We gather together, and this gathering together becomes the temple. See the differences? We don't come to a temple to worship God. We come together and we become the temple from where we worship God. Becoming God's temple is what Paul is challenging the Ephesians. Becoming God's temple where there is peace for all. So we become the temple, the dwelling place of God with Jesus as the cornerstone. This is what brings real peace. This is the peace that Paul is talking about. And then this is when we can truly say Jesus is our peace. The cornerstone that pulls us together, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know this is not easy. Easy to say, not easy to do. Because the fear to lose who we think we are and what we think that defines us is real. There is fear to let go who we think we are. It is a fear that we're going to lose ourselves. We're going to be losing something that we really appreciate.
appreciate. But this is what Paul is saying in his letter. In Christ, we become new people. New people. And this can be very scary. Most of the time, these fears will bring violence among groups. Most of the time, this fear is what does not allow us to come together as one people in God. This is the dream of God as Hillary was reading from the book. Breaking walls of separation is not an easy task. It requires the hard work of recognizing that we are all alike. And I know it is a hard thing to do when we recognize that men and women, transgender, intersex, queer, white, brown, black, yellow, red, people of all colors and all kinds of diversity, racial, ethnic, cultural, old and young, we are all alive. It does not matter what kinds of defining characteristics we have and want, want to put there. We are all alive. We are all children of God. And when we grasp that this is our call, that God is calling us as God's people in the world to do good and to be an agent of God capable of breaking down those barriers that separate us, putting aside our fears of diversity and united by the common bond of Christ, we become God's dwelling place in the world. The other day, very early in the morning, I saw my phone and I thought that Jeff, Jeff, or Jeff, Jeff Dickerson, had called me early. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought, and I said, oh my God, then they call him. And I called him immediately. We started talking. And it was one of those things that when, when that happens, you think, oh, this is my mistake, I'm sorry. It was not a mistake. It was a gut shot, like you said. says. We had to talk. For some reason, we just needed to talk. And our conversation, I don't know about you, but Every time I talked with Jeff, I received some kinds of nuggets of wisdom in our conversation. And I feel that I am a better person every time I talk with Jeff. He, he has such a gentle soul. And in our conversation, that was meant to be. It was not a mistake. We talk about many things. And after a while talking, I said, oh Jeff, so why you call me? And he said, I didn't call you. <laughs> and I said, oh. And then he said, well, God meant it. And I said, I know God meant it. We're real. And then he told me these words that I'm going to pass to you. Words that came to him, I think, from someone from this community at some point. And he, he said, he had been given the gift of these words. Become friends with people who aren't your age. Hang out with people whose first language is not the same as yours. Get to know someone who doesn't come from your own social class. This is how you see the world. This is how you grow. And you know what? This is what Paul is saying in this letter to the Ephesians. This is what Paul is saying, because if we believe in Jesus, we have that common belief in Jesus. We, Jesus becomes our peace. Because Jesus has already made peace for us. For those near and for those far, there is no stranger or alien, and we become members of God's household. Then, we become the dwelling place of God on earth. Jesus made this possible for us. And Jesus calls us to grasp it. And Paul is telling us, and over and over and over, you 
become the dwelling place of God when all barriers are turned down. That is the real peace in Jesus that Paul is talking about. And this is the peace that the world needs. This is the peace that our country needs. This is the peace that our communities need and this is the peace that our families need. This is the peace that our church needs. How can we deny such peace when it has already been given to us? It is a gift from God to us. Sometimes it's difficult to recognize the barriers that divide us. If we don't recognize them, we need to pray harder. We need to pray so that God opens our eyes and our ears to see how God sees and hears, to know how God knows. So we can see the dividing words and hear the cries of those excluded. And then, only then, we need to ask God for direction. We need to God ask God to direct our actions to become God's agent of reconciliation and God's dwelling place in the world. My friends, brothers and sisters, as we continue building our faith together, let us acknowledge that Jesus is our peace, our common bond in which we are reconciled as new people where the walls that divide us gets turned down as we continue building together and growing into God's dwelling place on earth. And let us feast not be only God's dream. Let us be, let us make this the reality in this world. Amen. Amen. in the affirmation of faith. You may stand up if you wish. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe, we believe in God, God the Father, in nurture, infinite, infinite in wisdom, wisdom power and love, whose mercy is over all God's works, and whose will is ever directed to God's children. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of God's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with um, receiving our offerings um, either through um, our office or internet or Givelify. And we want to thank you for your offerings that makes possible that this ministry in this church continue uh, its doors open as the light in the hill, not only for this community, but for the world. Let us pray. Holy God. You love, you love us, us so deeply, deeply that, that you pursue us relentlessly. You send your Son, Jesus, into the world that we who were far off would, would be brought near to you by, you by his blood. We, we offer our gifts to you, knowing we can never outgive you, never balance the equation. You don't desire balance, no quid pro quo, only that we find the peace you desire for us. 
whose foundation is in your word and whose cornerstone is Christ alone. In that holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us in closing him for the beauty of the earth. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.